So we are starting with uh, study session 8 today. And the first reading that we are going to do is understanding income statement. Okay, now try to understand this. When we studied corporate finance, we prepared an income statement. The format of that income statement was sales minus, please help me, sales minus, no, when we study variable cost, correct. In corporate finance, we said sales minus variable cost, which gave us contribution minus fixed cost, EBIT minus interest, which gave us EBT and minus, which gave us EA. This financial statement or this type of statement is used for decision making purpose. Okay. And why? Because we have classified cost, cost classification based on the behavior. Okay. Why, why behavior? That we have classified cost here into variable cost and fixed cost. We are trying to understand that when I manufacture more, Will my cost increase proportionately or will it remain at the same level? Now what we want to study is the same income statement but for reporting purpose. And therefore we are going to classify the cost based on function and nature. So now instead of saying variable cost and fixed cost, we will try to find out was this cost spent for marketing purpose or was it used for manufacturing purpose or was it a part of depreciation. So we will start with sales also called as revenue also called as top line also at times called as turnover okay. minus COGS what would be COGS cost of goods sold so this number directly includes the manufacturing expense everything that concerned with manufacturing comes here so primarily three variables COGS will have cost of raw material cost of direct labor and cost of overheads. What are overheads? Maybe electricity expenses. Anything which is concerned with manufacturing. We will simply call them as overhead expenses. So sales minus COGS, what does it give us? Gross profit. Okay, The profit from the core manufacturing operations. Then what do we reduce next? Yes, the next number that we reduce is called S, G and A, selling general and administrative expenses. So every other expense which is concerned with your business, which is an operating expense is clubbed into SGA. When we say gross profit minus SGA, what do we get? Net profit? Will we get net profit now? Have we taken care of interest? Have we taken care of depreciation? No. So what we get here is called EBITDA. Earning before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. Then we would say minus depreciation or amortization. And then what we get here is EBIT. Okay. Now see try to understand the difference. We have reached EBIT in both the income statements. However, all the cost before EBIT here was classified either into variable cost or fixed cost. Whereas when you come for reporting purpose, you classify them based on the function for which they were spent. Isn't it? So was it a manufacturing cost or was it a sales and general cost or was it the cost on account of depreciation? After this, the income statement is going to be same. So now we will have interest, which would give us EBT and now we would have taxes, which would give us earning after taxes or at times also called as profit after taxes. Okay, So our agenda of this reading is that we have to develop an expertise into each of the item in this particular pro forma. How SGA is calculated, how depreciation is calculated, we have to understand that in depth. Are you done writing this? So let's look at the income statement now. I have uh, Kraft Foods. This is 2012 data. This is from the 10K, which is the annual report. 
net revenues this is in million dollars 18339 we also have comparative statements of 2010 and 2011 then what we get next is cost of sales so this is given as the gross profit of the company using this will you be able to calculate gross profit margin yes please calculate tell me how much Five eight four zero divided by one eight three three nine. How much? Sorry, point thirty one. Is it three one? Okay. So gross profit margin is thirty one percent. Once that is done, then you can see that we have a SGA component here, selling general and administrative expenses. Everything else has been clubbed into this. Had I not had we had they not put this thing here. If I simply say five eight four zero minus three zero two nine, what will we get? EBITDA. Okay, so you can calculate EBITDA for the company. This EBITDA is also called as operating cash profit or cash operating profit. Okay, and once we reduce, they have some impairment expenses here. Once you take care of that, what you are left with is the operating income, which is nothing but EBIT, earning before interest and taxes. Should we go at how much was the EBITDA? Okay, all right. Going forward, so then reduce interest, some royalty income, earning from continuing operations before income taxes, provision for taxes, and which would give us earning from dis continuing operations one six four two, and then earning or gain from discontinued operations is zero. and that gives us the amount of net earning which is 1642 using this can you calculate the net profit for the company net profit margin 1640 divided by 18339 8% okay so about the net margin seems to be in the range of 8% do you understand the meaning of earning and gain from discontinued operations yes what does it mean boxes let us say so again thinking of uh, the itc examples we've discussed in the past that they have multiple business units they're into paper tobacco confectionery clothing cosmetics so let's say that uh, th this company has five business major units a b c and d and e the sales of a and this example you can write it will be helpful sales is 200 300 200 hundred so that gives us 800 and 200 expenses 100 150 100 and 100 which would give us profit before tax or earning before tax Okay, so this would be hundred. This would be one fifty. This would be hundred. This would be fifty. This would be hundred. Let's say tax rate is thirty percent. So we have thirty, forty-five, thirty, fifteen, and thirty. So you'll have your net profit, which is one o five. This is seventy. This is thirty-five, and this is seventy. This becomes one forty to eighty. 350 so your net profit is 350 done writing this now please focus carefully let us say in the last board meeting of this company they decided that they want to discontinue the business operations of unit e okay this is to be closed down now these are big businesses so let's say i have itc has decided to close down the paper business now if they took the decision today and tomorrow a customer came to them will they say no to him no of course if there is an opportunity to make profit even if it's temporary why not so which means the decision has been taken to discontinue e 
but we can still have some profit for a few months or a few, a few years. Imagine now how the income statement otherwise would have been made. Total sales 500, 700, 800, 1000. Total cost this is 500. So total of all of this. So total profit before tax is 500. Tax on this is 150 and then net profit of 350. But if you make your statement in this fashion, in a way you are misguiding your shareholders. The reason being, you know that out of this 1000, 200 is not expected ne next year because that was coming from discontinued operation. And same is the case with cost and therefore the profit. So instead of reporting in this way, the companies are required to report in this fashion. You will say sales, this is not to be considered now. So 500, 700, 800. Cost, 400. Profit before tax, 400. Tax on that, 120. So you get 280 here. And then say finally plus net profit after taxes from discontinued operation, 70. So you add that 70 net of taxes at the bottom and then you disclose a net amount of 350. So your profit is same in both the cases but you are clearly telling your shareholders that please do not expect that 70 next year. My revenue does not include revenue from discontinued operations so that it's easier for anyone to understand and interpret your financials. Are we okay here?